What's up, that today's video is probably gonna be one of the most in-demand videos on this channel, because today I'm gonna be breaking down the top 5 most common errors as well as traps in the Sicilian defense. And Sicilian defense is so common that you are probably gonna face it extremely often, and possibly even with both colors. Now it starts off with white playing the first move, pawn to e4, and black responding pawn to c5. The most common response is pawn e5, but c5 is a close rival. Now, after c5, white normally gets into the open Sicilian defense by playing knight to f3, and then let's say black goes knight to c6, pawn to d4, and exchange of pawns in the middle of the board. And here comes the first most common error that I see millions of people keep playing. And it's black playing knight takes d4. It's very common for people when they see such an exchange, such an opportunity for an exchange, they go ahead and take here. But in reality what it does is it simply allows white to completely dominate in the middle of the board and their queen is now feeling completely safe in the center of the board because black can now can no longer attack it for lack of this knight on c6. And white is just completely dominating and black is already in a quite a tough situation. You see they can't play you know, g6 to fiancato their bishop because uh, this would hand the, the rook on g8. They cannot normally develop their knife to f6 because you can push e5 and kick it off. And for that reason black usually goes pawn to d6, trying to stop you from pushing the pawn forward, and after white goes knight c3, here black follows up with yet another error. They play pawn to e5, which is a tempting option trying to get rid of this queen and to get some extra tempo for development, but if you know how to take advantage of this weakness, it's gonna backfire really badly. And the main drawback of this move is that it weakens a lot of the light squares around black's king and in general, in black's position. So what you do wanna do is instead of moving your queen away, you can actually go ahead and play bishop b5 and counterattack black. That's how you take advantage of this weakness. Black is gonna cover by bishop to d7 and then you play queen a4, reinforcing this attack along this diagonal against black's king. And again, black's position is already quite tough. If they ever decide to release this tension and capture here on b5, this is in fact a completely bad error, because now after a knight takes b5, you set it up for some discover check on the next move by jumping with your knight somewhere and allowing for your queen to attack his king. Many would be tempted to play queen to d7 here, but this in fact does not solve the problem, because although it looks like it neutralized your queen, but you can still play knight to c7, making use of the pin. So the queen is pinned down to the king and cannot move, therefore black will have to move the king away, but now you can take this queen and then grab the rook on a8, and you just won a free rook. Coming in number 4 in our list is another extremely common error, but this time it's an error that usually white commits. After black goes knight of 6, uh, which is a perfectly fine move to attack this pawn and white defends it, black goes into the Sveshnikov variation e5, one of the again classical variations of the Sicilian defense, and here lots of players who aren't familiar with it, they go ahead and capture here on c6, which is a pretty big positional error. Now, what's the issue with this move? Well, by playing pawn to e5, once again, black weakened a bunch of squares along the d-file, and white can take advantage of that by moving their knight to b5, and they already threatened knight to d6 check, which is somewhat unpleasant for black. The square d5 is also vulnerable, you can bring your bishop to c4 in the future, and so on. Of course, this is a well-known variation, it's not that white is winning, but white is having a good game here. If instead, white takes here on c6, then this helps black to strengthen their center by playing pawn takes c6. Now the square d5 is no longer weak, it is defended by the pawn, moreover, in the future, black can push the other pawn forward to d5 and completely grab the center. In addition to that, black has a nice semi-open file for their rook, which sometimes can be really useful for black's attack. For example, if here white plays another extremely common and wrong move bishop to g5, then it actually gets white in a really dangerous spot here. Now, many players believe that putting this pin is a great idea for white, but in reality, in many positions it can backfire if black knows how to take advantage of that. The main drawback of moving the bishop away from the queen side is that it weakens that queen side, and black can play rook to b8 and take aim at this weak pawn on b2 right away. That already forces white to make some passive defensive moves, such as rook to b1. Then you can play pawn to h6, which is a move that I personally recommend pretty much always when you see an opponent putting his bishop to g5, because that forces white to make some decision about this bishop, whether white wants to trade or to go back. Usually they will go back to maintain the pin. And here is the key tactical idea that completely ruins white's position. This is a move queen to a5. And basically white can resign, although it may not seem that way, but it is actually true. Now, queen a5 is an extremely multifunctional move. First off, you put this pin, it's kind of counter pin. He wanted to pin you, but you say, hey, no, I want to pin you. Uh, secondly, it gets your queen out of the way so that you can actually move your knight to e4 right now and capture the pawn. Again, the knight is pinned. 
You may also play a bishop b4 and, you know, reinforce the attack along this diagonal. In addition to that, if that's not enough, if white captures here on f6, and they usually do, then you've got another really cool little combo, it is rook takes b2. You kind of completely blow up white's uh, queen side, and you take advantage again of all the weakness of all those dark squares. And after rook takes b2, you can now grab this knight on c3, check to the king. After that, queen to d2, you can snatch the rook on b2, and currently black is a pawn up, but that's not even the main thing. The main thing is now this bishop is hanging, and as white moves it, that fails to bishop b4. Once again, there is a disastrous weakness of white's uh, dark squares, and you just win the queen along this pin. So that's how white playing seemingly natural, normal looking moves can be destroyed so quickly if you just know this common error in the Sicilian defense. On a side note, if you're curious to know how you can punish your opponents for playing these kind of pins against you in various kinds of openings, I've got another video where I cover some more ex extremely powerful ways for you to do so. Coming in number three in our list is yet another common error of black. This time we can talk about the other move. In this position, which is sometimes called the Fortnite's variation of the Sicilian defense, uh, we just cover that the move pawn to e5 is an option for black that weakens all these squares and not everybody loves that. So black is gonna deal with that somehow. And those players who want to play more, you know, kind of slower and positional chess may wish to play pawn to g6 saying, hey, I want to keep my pawns intact so that I play bishop g7 in castle and I'm completely fine. But playing this move pawn to g6 in the four knights variation can be extremely dangerous, because now white has a really nice follow-up, knight takes c6. Now, I've told you just a couple minutes ago that usually you should not take their own c6 on by yourself, and that's correct. But in this particular case, you've got a very specific attack and idea in mind, and that's why we go for that exchange. After black recaptures, you can now push the pawn forward to e5, and that's the whole point of our idea. That forces this knight to go somewhere, and all the options seem to be equally unattractive. Moving it all the way back to g8 feels like uh, black is preparing to resign and is setting up for the next game. And if black decides, okay, I don't want to go back, so let me go forward no matter what. In this case, white's gonna grab this pawn on d5. This may not seem like the end of the world for black. Black may go rook b8 and say, okay, I sacrificed the pawn, but now I have an active rook here. Maybe bishop is gonna come to b7 and attack the queen and be active along this diagonal. And it's all nice, but one has one more extremely powerful attacking move that you're gonna remember is the move pawn to e6. It's, it's an extremely sudden tactic, and that's why even strong players often overlook it playing black. The point is, it vacates this e5 square for your queen, and from, from there it's gonna double attack black's rooks. Again, it's very uh, unconventional tactics here. I, I, I don't think I ever saw anything like that in any other opening, where your queen from e5 can double attack black's rooks. Uh, so again, that's something really annoying. And even if your opponent is so advanced that he can notice the threat of queen going to e5 and plays pawn to f6, that doesn't slow down your attack. You can keep pushing forward and keep attacking. You just play a bishop to f4, this time hitting the rook with a bishop and also preparing for you to castle queenside, which is going to put more pressure along the d-file. And black has nothing to do anyway, so they usually go ahead and take here on b2, but you bravely castle anyway. We don't worry about this uh, little rook on b2, it cannot really checkmate you. And, you know, in fact, we're gonna checkmate black very soon after a pawn takes d7. And if black goes back to b7 trying to defend it, uh, you can play a bishop b5 very strong, or bishop a6, and it completely collapses for black. We're gonna take over here, then we're gonna take over here. We have this extremely strong pressure along the d-file, and black is done. By the way, if you want to know how to find such attacking moves in any opening, not just in this particular position, then let me invite you to join my free masterclass by clicking the link uh, below the video in the description, where I show you my step-by-step -step method for developing a great attacking skill. Coming in number two in our list is something you're gonna face extremely often on amateur level. It is when your opponent plays bishop c4 against the Sicilian defense. Kind of neglecting the fact that you haven't played the move pawn e5 and it's not the Italian game anymore, but they play their moves anyway. Now, what are you doing against this move pawn to bishop to c4? Well, first off, you wanna play bishop pawn to e6 just to blockade this bishop completely so that now it hang, no longer attacks along this diagonal. And moreover, in all of these variations, you have this push d5, which is gonna gain you an extra tempo attack in the bishop. But what I recommend actually after white castles, which is the most common move here, is that instead of playing d5 right away, you also play knight to f6, which is a nice provocative move. We attack this pawn on e4 and we force white to either play a defensive move to defend it, or if white pushes forward, that actually backfires because this pawn is getting weaker. And now after knight g4, we're gonna attack it with both of our knights. 
We can also play Queen to C7 if we want to add, you know, one more attacker. Or finally, we can just play, you know, Pawn to D6 and trade it off. And all in all, you know, this Pawn is more of a liability for White. It's a weakness, so that's something nice. Now, if White does not want to push the Pawn forward, they're likely to play Pawn to D3. And now you can strike in the center with a move pawn d5, and life's good. Now after this exchange, you grab the center, you have like this pawn in the center, this pawn is also influenced in the center, and white has nothing. You also gain an extra tempo attacking this bishop, uh, so that's, you know, that's also something nice. Uh, temporarily, your king is exposed along the e-file, but that's not a problem, because if white moves their bishop away, you can just play bishop e7 to cover the king, and then you castle, play bishop g4, and everything is great. Again, it is now white who has to fight for equality and find proper moves, so you definitely gain the upper hand here. And here comes my favorite trap against the Sicilian defense. It arises from black playing pawn to d6, which is a starting point for the knight operation or the dragon operation, all are extremely popular. Now we go d4, pawn takes, knight takes, oops, not that, pawn takes d4, knight recaptures, and after knight f6, here, of course, the main move is knight to c3, which is gonna defend this pawn on e4. But what you do instead is that you pretend like you mixed up something, and you play the move bishop c4. Okay, so again, your opponent will probably think that you just, again, messed up the move order and forgot to play knight c3 first before moving your bishop out, because it hands this pawn on e4, and black will be happy to capture it. It seems like there is no reason for black not to grab the center of pawn, and then, you know, you can play d5, e5, grab the center, attack your pieces, all seems to be just great for black. But there is a very str strange looking move, queen h5, which puts really difficult problems for black to handle. Now, queen h5 is kind of like the scholar's checkmate attempt. We're gonna play queen takes f7. But strangely enough, it's not easy for black to parry it. In fact, if black plays pawn g6, which is could be the first impulse, that loses to your queen swinging over to the center of the board with a queen d5 with a double attack to the knight and pawn, and so you kind of made that scholar's checkmate become a reality. So that's pretty bad for black. If instead black plays pawn to e6, that leads to a really beautiful combo for you. First off, you play bishop b5 to check the king. Notice that this c6 square is also controlled by your knight, so black cannot move their knight there, it's going to be captured. And if black instead covers their king, usually with the bishop, then you've got a really fascinating move, knight takes e6. That's really cool. I really wish that you played this move in one of your games. I feel it's going to be very enjoyable to do that. Now, it looks like you're striking in the most defended square of black, and it is true. And here you can utilize this double pin, right? So black cannot ca capture with the bishop because it's pinned down to the king along this diagonal, and they cannot capture with a pawn because it's pinned by your queen. And for that reason, this knight on e6 cannot be captured. But instead, it also attacks the queen. Potentially, it is ready to jump over here to c7 and check the king. So in most cases, black plays queen a5, trying to escape with a tempo by checking your king. But then you play bishop d2, and now black has a nice choice of exactly how they want to lose. Now, they can grab one of your bishops, and, you know, they gotta do something, by the way, because you're hitting their queen. If they grab this bishop on d2 with their knight, that fails nicely to bishop takes d7, which opens up this discovered attack along the fifth rank, and then you grab the queen. Instead, black may decide, hey, I want to grab this free bishop on b5. Hey, queen takes b5, I'm winning a bishop. And you say... Not so fast, knight to c7 is a very nice triple fork, and we're gonna probably grab the queen on the next move, and we win anyway. If you enjoyed these traps, I've got another video with some more traps in the Sicilian defense, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and I'll talk to you soon.